Hello, we're going to get started with our lesson on solving equations with square roots. So this will have equations, square roots, and solving. We have to go over a couple of things first before we can get right into solving them. First off, the property of equality. It says whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to another. Just a quick review. So here's an example. If I have x plus 1 is equal to 5, I would use the property of equality to subtract 1 from both sides. The reason I'm doing that is to get rid of this 1 and get x by itself. That's called isolating my variable, right? Because the opposite of plus 1 is minus 1. Plus 1 minus 1, it gets rid of it. The, the equation stays balanced because we subtracted 1 from both sides. x is equal to 4. Could you have told me that at the beginning, 4 plus 1 is 5? Yes. But this is just a review on the property of equality because we're going to be using it a lot throughout this lesson. All right. Next review is something I actually just talked about briefly, and that is inverse operations. To solve for any variable, you need to do the inverse or the opposite operation. So in our previous example, we had x plus 1. We had to do the opposite, subtracting 1. And some examples of inverse operations are that addition undoes subtraction, or is the opposite of subtraction. Multiplication and division are opposite. And squaring a number is the opposite of the square root of a number. And you'll see how that works in the next question when we start getting into this. All right, so we will be using inverse operations. We'll be using all of these, actually, today, specifically focusing on our new content, that's square root. All right, let's start out small. x squared is equal to 144. Looking at this, you can probably tell me, yes, x is equal to 12. 12 squared is 144. That's good. The way that we actually solve this is to do the inverse of the opposite operation. The inverse of x squared is to take the square root of x. So we take the square root of both sides. Again, you're seeing that property of equality and inverse operations right here at the beginning. We take the square root of x squared. That leaves us with x on the left side. The square root of 144 is 12. Technically, plus or minus 12, but we're just going to write the positive values um, for the duration of this lesson. All right, so x is equal to 12. Now let's take that to um, one step further. Again, you can pause the recording kind of as we go and, and look through that if you want. Here is the next step of what we would do. If we have x squared plus 3 is equal to 28, we're going to use inverse operations to get x by itself or to isolate our variable. What we need to do is start the farthest away from x. So we're going to start out by subtracting 3 from both sides of this equation. That gets rid of this x squared plus 3. It's going to get rid of that plus 3 and leave us with just x squared. You can see that plus 3 minus 3 will leave us with just x squared. On the right side of the equation, 28 minus 3 is 5. Now we're looking at something that's a little bit easier to solve. x squared is equal to 25. We'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. Again, that would be plus or minus 5, but we're just going to write it as a positive. All right, so there we have it. Now, in most of the equations I'm going to do today, they'll end up with a nice even number. In real life, you oftentimes end up with a crazy decimal when you're working with square roots, and that's, that's normal to be expected. All right, let's do one more that's similar to this. x squared minus 2 is equal to 47. We were going to get rid of the minus 2 at first by adding 2 to both sides of this equation. Keep it balanced. That leaves us with x squared on the left, 49 on the right. We'll take the square root of both sides of this equation. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 49 is 7. Apologize if I went a little quick. We do have several questions for this lesson. So you can pause it at any time or, or look through these questions, but I'm showing you all of the steps there. I also don't want to drag on if there's, if you get it, I want to kind of keep moving. All right, so this is how we would solve this equation. Now, another um, 
operation is multiplication and division. We have in this example 2 times y squared is equal to 32. Whenever you get something like that, we're trying to get y by itself. And to do that, we want to get rid of everything that's farthest away from y first. Another way of thinking about that is that we're doing the opposite of the order of operations. So instead of doing exponents first, we're going to do multiplying. We're going to get rid of multiplying first. So 2 times y squared is equal to 32. I'm going to start out by dividing both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times y squared. It's going to leave us with our y squared, which is what we want to get. We want to get y squared by itself so that we can then take the square root of both sides. Notice we kept the equation balanced. 32 divided by 2 is 16. And we end up with a nice even number. The square root of y squared on the left, the square root of 16 on the right, and we are left with y is equal to 4. If we want to check this work, you can always take the value of 4, plug it into the original equation, and then solve. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is indeed 32. Now, for our last two questions, what we're going to do is, is um, incorporate several different operations. This is a multiple step equation. We're actually going to have to solve it in three steps. So we have addition, multiplication, and a square. We'll start by doing the order of operations backwards, or in other words, get rid of the things that are farthest from our variable first. We're looking mainly at the left side. We want to get rid of that 7 first. That's the farthest thing from z. So we'll subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. 7 minus 7 is 0. 10 minus 7 is 3. Perfect. Now we're left with 3z squared is equal to 3. I want to get rid of that 3 so that I have just z squared left over. We're getting rid of multiplication first, and then we're going to worry about the exponent. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times z squared leaves me with z squared on the left side. 3 divided by 3 is 1 on the right side. And now I'll take the square root of both sides of this equation. That will leave me with the square root of z on the left, which is z, and the square root of 1 on the right, which is 1. All right? So I, I'm left with z is equal to 1. Again, this is a three-step equation. We call it a multi-step equation. First, we got rid of, we did um, subtraction, division, then took the square root, always using the inverse operation to try and get that variable by itself. I'm going to do one more question like this. With this example, however, um, I'm going to give you <clears throat> one that does not make a nice even answer at the end. When in most questions, they'll ask you, they'll tell you how far to round it. So solve this and round it to the nearest tenth. All right. That way, I know I'm going to end up with a, a decimal at the end, but I'm given at least some parameters. So we're going to solve this one, round it to the nearest tenth. First step, I'm going to try and get rid of that plus 2. To do that, I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. 2 minus 2 is 0 on the left. On the right, 29 minus 2 leaves me with 27. I'm going to get rid of that 5 in front of the x squared. To do that, I'll divide both sides by 5. On the left, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times x squared leaves me with x squared on the left. On the right, 27 divided by 5 gives me 5.4. Okay, I know right now that I'm, I'm getting out of nice, nice uh, round numbers because this is not a perfect square. 5.4 is not a perfect square. When I take the square root of both sides of this equation, it's very important that I have a calculator because I don't know the square root of 5.4, and to calculate that would be very difficult. So I'll, I'm going to use my calculator. Square root of x squared on the left gives me x. Square root of 5.4 on the right is approximately equal to 2.3. Notice I changed the sign from being equal to being approximately equal because at this point I am rounding, and I round to the nearest tenth, I'm told, in the question. So I'm going to have just one number on the right of the decimal. And that's how you solve this type of problem.